Okay, so incredible show ahead for you today, party people. And the reason I say party people is because this episode is very special. It's my birthday this week, which also means it is the birthday of On The Brink. I'm turning a whopping two eight. <laughs> but On The Brink, this little baby is turning two years old. So I want to thank everybody that has been rocking with us from day one. And I also want to thank the people that just started uh, rocking with us or wherever you are on your On The Brink journey. Uh, my name is Malcolm Alexander. And today on the show, uh, because of the birthday, because of the celebration, I want to have on spiritual advisor and healer. She is amazing, y'all. Vega of the Valley. We get down to everything happening in the cosmos, maybe the parallel lines that are shared between spirituality and organized religion. And we also spill the tea, y'all. For the first time ever, I dive into what my birth chart says about me. And I think there's going to be some nuggets in there for y'all as well. So without further ado, y'all, give it up for Vega of the Valley. Vega, thank you so, so much for taking the time to sit down with me. I am so excited for this. And at the same time, instead of getting excitable, I, I said, okay, I'm talking to Vega of the Valley. I need to get grounded before I do this. <laughs> I, was, I was like, okay, I, I, can't, I can't be too hype. I said, let me just get grounded before this because this is just one of those conversations that I know will leave me better. It's going to leave people listening better. And I just thank you. And I'm so appreciative of your time and your energy, your skill set. Just thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank God for you. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Malcolm. That is so, so sweet. I'm excited to be here. Um, so thank you for sharing your platform, using your platform. This is a lot of fun for me. Of course. It's going to be a lot of fun for me. I know for the people listening, it's going to be really fun. Um, I feel like people are going to get read during this. When I first met you, a little context of people listening, um, Victoria, my girlfriend, and my sister, Brittany, they threw an amazing virtual event um, around the holidays. You were one of the featured speakers there, and it, and I I just felt red. I was I was just running tech for them in the background, and then you were giving your reading, you were giving your word, and I was like, "Is she talking to me right now?" And and Victoria was like, "No, she's speaking to everybody." I said, "Okay, I'm getting red." So the people listening, it's going to be really fun. It's going to be exciting for them because I hope. And I'm very confident that you're just going to say things that are just going to open people up. And of course, that's what we want to do in, in, the, uh, in the effort of leaving people better. So yes. first question for you is, Vega, what are you on the brink of? What am I on the brink of? Such an interesting question and title for your podcast. And I had to sit because I wanted to check in yes. and be authentic in my answer. And it is expansion. Like, I just feel this expansion happening for myself, for others, for our communities in the universe, because it's been such a time of constriction, right? Like the lockdown, the pandemic, quarantining, really being isolated and not able to even physically move, right? We're forced to sit with ourselves. Yeah. And going through all that process, I think then the natural thing is energy shift, energies moves. So now we're expanding. And what does that mean for each of us? What does that look like? And how can we own that, claim that, co-create that, you know, for ourselves and for each other? Expansion. Once again, maybe I'm, again, it might just be my my excitement for sitting down with and having the combo, but I love that word. And I feel if we really surrender, I think, you know, we, we, we talked just briefly a few days before this, but we were just talking about what that process of surrender might be in our journey. And expansion is kind of one of those conclusions at the end of surrender. I think it's like, if you want to grow, you have to give in to the current. You have to give in and you, you can't fight the current. You can't fight what is, because what is, is. I think that's been just a transformational realization that even if I understood that or had understanding of that pre-pandemic, accepting what is had a different kind of energy when you can't leave your home. <laughs> and, and, and what we know of our lives pre-pandemic is completely flipped upside down. And, and I, I just love expansion. That's, that's beautiful. Already gems dropped. What sparked your journey then into spirituality to bring you to the what? place that you are now? Okay, what sparked my journey? Um... For myself and for a lot of people, and I think it has happened to a lot of people, 
over the course of this last year, 2020, is usually it's a it's a trauma. It's a um, something hard that happens in your life. For me, it was during my Saturn returns, and we will get into that when we get to the astrology portion of today's chit chat. Um, it was the process of my Saturn returns, which was my father getting diagnosed with lung cancer, me being the caretaker for him, him passing away, and then that grieving process of loss and loss of a parent. Yeah. And so, you know, it was just my first biggie. Mm -hmm. Like when you go through loss and death, the first biggie is a hard one. They're all hard, but that first one is hard, especially, you know, at that age. And so that was the first time I, or not the first time, but where I more seriously was looking for answers and looking into spirituality. And it began with reading a lot of Buddha, Buddhist texts mm -hmm. and wisdom and, and um, knowledge about letting go, yeah. right? Being present, accepting everything as it is and not wishing it to be any different, yeah. right? I mean... Very simple concepts. We know them. We know these teachings. Yeah. We know these like slogans or, mm -hmm. but knowing them and practicing yes. them and yeah. embodying them and living like that is, is the other part of that journey. And not to say that it comes easy at that too. It, 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 I don't think the practice of it is easy. I, I think it is the practice of accepting what is. That is, it. Yeah. It, it's not one of those I just wake up and accept what is and just move on. That's a, that takes some shedding. It takes growth. It, it, it's a practice. That's why they, it's like, it's a practice, a meditation practice. Yeah. Like it's a muscle, the practice yeah. um, that you have to focus and do every day yeah. or every moment or remind yourself. Yeah. And so it was that, and it, it's this common, it's a popular um, spiritual um, thought of like when you're cracked open, when life cracks you open is how the light comes in. Uh, and if we live long enough and we signed up for this human experience, we're going to get cracked. Over. Yeah, yeah. That's what we say. Well, because like you know? nothing, no matter what you believe in, whether it's, you know, because I would say for me, I see that there is a balance. You know, I, I grew up in the church. I still find myself going to church, but people around me, um, you know, love astrology and we love spirituality. And for me, I can, I'm okay riding the lines. I can see both sides, but there's, there's so much divisiveness, but no matter what you believe in, that practice is universal. It's a universal human experience. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Not, none of it, no matter what you believe in, was promised to be easy. It wasn't promised to be right. easy. It wasn't promised to be hard. But life will deal out cracks. You know, life is going to deal out what it deals out. And it's who we are in those times that defines it. And as you said, it's only when we, we are willing to almost accept the cracks, accept the scars, accept the adversity, surrender to it, do we give space for light to come through those cracks. I, I just, the way it's illustrated is such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. It is. It's a beautiful way of thinking yeah. of that. Yeah. So, um, and so I think that happened to a lot of us, yeah. you know, this year, right? It was yeah. heartbreaking. Yeah. My heart was broken and is broken at so many major points over the course of the year. Yeah. And, um, and I, I found, and I was looking for solace again, and I went back to Buddhist, Buddhist texts, yeah. and I read a beautiful just take on being brokenhearted, mm -hmm. that when we choose to be heart warriors and warriors of light, that just means we're going to be brokenhearted a little bit all of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that the world needs us a little brokenhearted a little bit of time because the world needs us open. Oh. And that's how we are open. Let that, because when we... Like, let, oof. Wow. 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 C continue. I just want to let it simmer. I want to let the word simmer. It's, it's almost in that what you're saying is that we have to be vulnerable. We, we have to accept the fact that we are going to be flawed. It's not always going to be perfect in order for us to be of ultimate service with our life. We are flawed. We're human. Yeah. Really? You know, and we, I think, deny and judge and shame and hide our humanness. Mm. Shame is powerful. Yes, yes. Um, and so 
one last thought about being brokenhearted. It keeps us open, but it is through heartbreak that we find compassion. Yeah. Right. So like me losing my father, heartbreaking. I know what that is. If I come across anyone else who's lost their father or is going through that process, I have a level of compassion for them because I know I know where you at. Yeah. And I know what it's like. Yeah. And it just immediately makes us more compassionate. Yeah. So that's the process of being broken open. It leads to compassion and ultimately love. Well, in, in, in that journey, right, and in that acceptance, there is no hiding or acting as if it did not happen. That trauma almost allowed, uh, gave you space to empathize with someone else who probably experienced those traumas rather than trying to act like that, you know, it didn't happen. So many people do, they bury the trauma rather than, and I'm not saying put your business out there to the whole world or, you know, this traumatic thing happens, you have to go tell people, but there, there is someone who you, who are, who you're going to share that experience with, of right, potentially losing your father, right? Of losing your home, of lo- right, right? Of what we experience is heartbreak or loss. That context of how you came through that journey can always be DNA for allowing someone else to get through their own journey, especially if maybe they're experiencing, experiencing that loss, that, that heartache for the first time. If we keep, if, we, if we're selfish with our heartache, if we're selfish with our, with our pain, we can't help people that might be going through that same thing. Because I, I don't think that any kind of trauma is, is so unique to one person. The experience for each person is going to be different, but... To experience loss, everyone's going to experience it at one point, you know. And I know in the times that I experience loss, it's people who have experienced loss in their in their lives that have been almost the most service to me in those times. Yeah, and it's loss of life and loved ones, which is monumental. Yeah, but loss is loss, so yeah. it could be you know loss of dreams, loss of job, loss of relationships loss of friendships, you know, um, goals. I think that happened to a lot of us again in 2020, right? Certain things were just like, guess that's not happening and I have to let it go in order for the new to come in, right? But that process is still lost and it's still sad and it deserves its space for grieving. Everything. And I think that's a beautiful place of how you hold space for others in your practice and in your expertise is that we have to hold space for people to grieve, people to feel whatever it is that we're feeling. And I just want to applaud you for how you're able to hold space for people and to give people permission, give people space, give people the safe space to, to, to work through what they need to and want to and are willing to work through. I just want to big up you for that because it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful space for people to be, even be with you, even if it's, it is virtually. You're, you're changing people's lives even virtually right now. Oh, thank you so much, Malcolm. That's so sweet. Oh. I received that. <laughs> and um, and yes, virtual space is real, right? Like I was very resistant to virtual space. I always worked in person. Of course, of course. And so in this year, you know, getting virtual, um, it's interesting to see how it is still shared space. Yeah. You know, it, you, you still feel the energy. It's different, oh, it's but it, it's still there in its own unique way. No, what one hundred percent? Well, it, 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 you know, it leads me to just want to change gears too. You know, I mentioned to people listening, and I'll mention to you earlier, right? Where I can grow up in church, but then you know, I I, I keep my selenite, I keep my amethyst, I I, I keep my rose quartz, I I have my crystals, I you, you know, and I don't know if, if it's if, if I'm one way or the other, I, but I still know it's like I I my I, I pray to a God who is God. I, I, I you know, for me, it's my my connection. To spirituality is just, I, I say I use the vessel of God and Christianity that is my connection to source, but I'm not one of those where I'm going to look at anyone else practicing any other kind of way and shame or say what, what is happening is right or wrong. I know a way for spirituality that allows me to be of service to others and be my best self. I have my own way of practicing it, and I can't shame or, or look bad or have a weird perception of how anyone else practices it because at the end of the day, I don't know what is right or wrong, but I, I do know what is good and what is God and I can go to where that energy is. Why do you think right now, culturally, we are really at a bypass. I feel like the lines between spirituality and religion are really becoming muddled, they're becoming blurred, especially amongst the youth generation. Why, why, why do you think that is or can you speak to that phenomenon? Um, yes, well, it's happening. Like, you know, like spirituality. I think I should caveat that it's happening within certain demographics, cities, you know, cultures, because I still think 
some cultures are still very close to it mm -hmm. and we can kind of live in echo chambers, right? Yeah. I'll be like, everyone's into crystals, mm -hmm. but in the reality, you know, like there's a lot of folks out there are like, what, <laughs> you know, oh, like, yeah. know oh, yeah. it, right? So, um, but it has grown in um, popularity. It's been trending and I think folks are searching you know, it's for answers. Um, I also think they're cyclical. Like when we start talking again, when we start talking about astrology again, things happen in cycles. So there's kind of like energies flowing through now that are kind of related to like the 60s and 70s during that era yeah. when like freedom, free speech, the revolutionary spirit was happening. Mm -hmm. So there's also also kind of generational um, energies and um, trends like that that affected as well and also i think it's honestly it's access to information and the internet like you know like internet change that internet has change profound change. effects on us right and so it's like i actually can learn about these things or learn about different spiritual practices see which ones resonate with me and kind of put together my own practice my own definition of spirituality that works for me because in reality, there are as many ways to be spiritual and as many spiritual paths as there are spirits embodied in humans on earth. You know, it's such a personal journey that what spirituality means and looks like for you is for you, Malcolm. And that's for you to figure out. What that means and looks like for me is my journey and, and what I need to figure it out. Yeah. They may look very different. Sure. Right, just because we're different folks on different parts of our paths, right? Yeah. And so um, I think the freedom of that is nice yes. now. Yeah. You know, not only the the exchange of ideas and all that, and 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 to be real, most major religions, spiritual teachings, they teach the same thing. Yeah. Right. Like we are one. Yeah. <laughs> you we're, we're all connected. We are <laughs> one. There's a higher source. We're all connected to. That's all knowing. Yeah. You know, like these similar concepts of kindness, compassion, you know, um, there, but through the years, you know, I think as religion got organized and as history happened and yeah. politics happened, yeah. you know, um, that got into the mix. But at the core, a lot of the teachings are the same. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's just availability, you know, like I can go online and like do a deep dive and learn about Mayan astrology. Sure. You know, and, and learn if that calls to me and, and it excites me and it resonates with my soul, like I can start incorporating that. Like for me, being who I am, I love Western astrology. My family's Chinese, Chinese American, daughter of an immigrant. Sure. And so, like, we grew up with Eastern astrology, mm. like the Lunar New Year. Yeah. It's coming up. Yeah. In February, it's going to be the year of the ox. Eastern astrology are 12 animal signs and they last a whole year. Sure. Um, and so that becomes my little mix of understanding things yeah. and making sense of things for myself and the world. Yeah. And it doesn't seem like anything is too new. I think people sometimes will look at new, you know, what seemed like new spiritual practice new to them, their timeline of understanding and seeing it maybe. But nothing is new under the sun. Meditation and, and astrology, none of this is new. And, 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 and to my understanding of it now, it, 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 it does, in some senses, make sense. We consider where the moon might have been the day that we were born. We think where the moon is now and where, you know, I'm, I'm, just, I'm a water baby, not just as an Aquarian, but just like I like water. Maybe it's the Aquarian energy, but I, I just, I, have, I need water. I can, I can go to the beach at 6 a.m. And, and jump right in the water and just sit there. Like I, I love, I love being in the water. The water just, it does, it unlocks something for me spiritually. And so it, it is one of those things that I, I do have a belief, I've subscribed to the belief that just how I articulate it for myself and, and my own spiritual practice is that like being in water, connection to water does bring me closer to God. It brings me closer to a higher self to allow me to be, be an optimal place to be of service to others and, and, and to be my best self. I, and, and so I'm, I don't know. I I love I love where we are at. I think culturally because I think it is as you said, it's allowing people to just seek out information and to just ask the questions and get the answers that they want to maybe be their best self. Yes, yes, and I love 
what you're saying about the stars and water because I am a water baby too. Oh. I have water in my chart. My son is in Pisces. Pisces is a water sign. And, um, and, and same thing, like the ocean, yeah. you know, being in water, being in a bath, being in a hot tub, being in a hot spring. Like, Some, you know, that's the, all I dream about doing <laughs> while I'm stuck at home in a pandemic, it does you know? I, I, feel, I feel like everyone's getting the home gym right now, and it's like, that'd be nice. I want the home hot tub. That's Yeah, that's, I'm manifesting a hot tub, too. I'm manifesting, it, you know, so it is. Yeah. So it is. So it is. Okay, all the like, hot tubs find look, me. Actually, home. right, I want a hot tub or better, you know? Or better. A hot tub or, or better. better. We'll just, better. Better. I'll take our better. Yes. Well, I, I love um, I love you mentioned yes. about water in in your chart, right? I only, and I'm gonna say context of the past four years, and again, I know it's not I know it's not new, but it was new to me as in the past four years, right? Where I was born, my 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 aunt, uh, she's she's Queen Aquarius, right? So she I grew up with her always telling me, like, you're 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 my only fellow Aquarius in, in the family. Woo hoo, we're Aquarius. Aunt and, and nephew, like like shout out to Annie Davis. I'm not, I'll send this to her to show her some love. Uh, she just had an amazing birthday. But to my knowledge, all I ever was was an Aquarius, right? I grew up and I was like, I'm Aquarius, I'm Aquarius, I'm Aquarius, right? And then only the past like few years, now there's more signs that I gotta consider because I have apparently a rising, a sun, a moon, a falling, a diagonal. I have been so confused. And I do not say this to be shady to the astrological practice, but I had no idea what what, what any of this had meant. And maybe I have listeners that, you know, are probably the same where it's like, I thought I was just one sign, but apparently I got I got a sun, I got a moon, I got a Jupiter, I got all these things. And so I need a breakdown of what exactly and how to find what it exactly it is a, a rising a sun and a moon right because last time i checked i was just an aquarius yes yes and your journey is a very common journey for folks probably who grew up like in the u.s or the western world yeah. in their relationship <laughs> and exposure yeah. to astrology sure. and you are right like now i think with the internet tons more information so many rabbit holes we can go oh, down yeah. astrology is definitely one of them yes for sure, because they can get very complex and complicated in the system, yeah. right? And there's very many different kinds of astrology. Yeah. There's Vedic astrology that comes from like India and those cultures yeah. and Western and Asian and Eastern, right? Sure. So we'll break it down. So I saw a wonderful quote on social media just this week that said, astrologers are just the weathermen for vibes. <laughs> <laughs> you know and that's about it it's wow. like the, what i call cosmic energy yes. like the sun is in aquarius what does that mean sure. and the sun is in aquarius now you know it's like so you know so so that's a very easy way to understand it that right like fun. you might be foggy headed today with a lot of stop and go energy <laughs> as, but don't worry true. by the end of the week things smooth out you know, and it's like, you can hear that, you could pay attention to it, you could apply it, you could ignore it, you know. Because when, when, when the meteorologist says there's rain, we, we take an umbrella with us. <laughs> exactly. Some people do. Some people don't even pay to the pay attention to the weatherman, right? Oh, no, no, no. I, I just bring a hoodie with me wherever I go. I don't even know what an umbrella I'll be honest. I could care less. But if I see it's raining, I just have a hood. It is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> So astrologers, weather forecaster for vibes that you may experience and feel now and coming up. Sure. Um, and as you touched upon, our relationship to the stars and the skies, it's ancient. Yeah. Ancient, ancient, right? We have pyramids and sacred sites that are perfectly aligned during solstices and equinoxes to like direct stars, like serious, you know, like that was intentional. That was a deep sacred relationship to the skies. Yeah. Our peoples navigated their ways across vast lands and across endless oceans yeah. by using the stars, yeah. right, as guides. Yeah. So there's just a long relationship, mythology, understanding, connection to stars and skies, and that's where it's born from. Sure. And as, as we know, um, scientifically, the moon and the gravitational force of the moon affects our ocean tides, right? That's science. That's basic science. Basic science. So it 
goes to make sense that we as human beings on planet Earth who are maybe what 98% water? Is that what it is? <laughs> you know, like, it I, look, like, I said it on the like, podcast. I said, don't you can't talk to me if you're not hydrated. I said, how 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 do we have all these things going on in our lives? And you're gonna you're gonna talk to me about how stressed you are, and I'm like, well, did you drink water today? No. And I'm just like, well, exactly. <laughs> Water is life. Water is life. Water is life, <laughs> <Yeah>. right? <laughs> um, and so, so maybe we might be a little affected by what the moon and stars and other planets are doing yeah. out there, right? Mm. Again, like data shows, like when it's a full moon, yeah. more crimes, more you know, criminal activity or police activity or whatever, because it's like very intense build up and then release energy, yeah. it's like a full moon, right? So we know it does affect us. That's the whole mythology of the werewolf, right? Yeah. Be careful, you know. Of course, of course. You know, friends and I will joke with each other and be like, I'm staying in this mood. Like, I ain't going out in those crazy energies. <laughs> you know, we might just feel it sure, sometimes. Sure, sure. Like that. <laughs> so that's the basic understanding of how um, just astrology may be a helpful framework for us to understand what's going on in our yeah, lives. Definitely. So your son is in Aquarius. And so when you were born in February, the sun in the skies was in Aquarius, yeah. that part of the sky. So that's why your sun sign is Aquarius. Now right? Sense of what my son and that's the first sign we learn and the first sign we know. And that's why we're just like, I'm a Pisces. That's all I am, right? I'm an Aquarius. That's all I am. That's all I know. That's all I know. That's all I know. <laughs> and actually, I read an interesting bit of history of that, of like when they started including newspaper uh, horoscopes in like newspapers, like that little blurb. Yeah. When it was a new thing and they wanted to incorporate it, I think like they just chose sun sign. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't because it was the most important. They just humans made that decision to choose that when they could easily have chosen the moon sign. Sure or another sign, right? So that's just an interesting, like culturally, that's just what started getting printing in newspapers and they ran with it. That is so right? funny. I, like, and again, in context, like who, who would know? Because I, I grew up not associating Aquarius with being my sun sign. I just thought, yeah. The, again, it was sign, for me, sign was dictated by the, day, the, the month and the day that you were born. It, it, it was, okay, February 18th, I'm on the cusp, I'm Aquarius, it's done. But it's, exactly. it's sun was, exactly. sure. that's too funny. So um, what we can look at is not only where the sun was when you were born, yeah. but basically where the moon was, like was the, what sign the moon was in, and that becomes your moon sign. Mm -hmm. And so astrologers use what's called a birth chart. Mm -hmm. It's a circle usually that looks like a piece of pie, a pie cut into little pie pieces. Is, is, is this the time that I get mine together? You tell me when to, yes. when to bring mine out. Yeah, yeah. Why okay. don't you, why don't right. you, I'm going to start explaining it. And then okay. Malcolm, you've been so sweet to volunteer your own birth chart up. I, I that we can literally use for an example whole, today. I'm, I'm putting my entire business out there for the people. <laughs> you sure? We are, I, 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 this is a whole new level of vulnerability on, on the brink. It is. It is. I have a big old page with my birth chart that Vegas sent over ahead of this, and I'm gonna. Uh, it's gonna give me more, more discernment into who I am. Based yes, around we'll peek a little bit, and we'll start just connecting some dots and seeing what resonates for you. All right. Because ultimately, why I like astrology is that it's basically uh, the personal mythologies we create for ourselves through this framework and through this structure. Sure. Because your sweet story about your aunt, who is an Aquarius, like she had her own de definition of what that meant. And she clearly oh. loved it oh, and yeah. loved that you were one and just like oh. had a special connection. Oh, it, like, right? like, like, like it was everything. It was everything. Yeah. So it's like, just personal meaning for us. Yeah. And again, that's also very personalized, right? And so I think it's just a powerful way for us to understand um, and develop ways to understand ourselves through storytelling. Yeah. Okay. So are you ready? Malcolm. Yes, uh, yes. I, I am ready. So, and, and then we, we wait. So, wait, hold up. Before we go, go in, rising. So, I understand what my moon sign would be because that's where the moon is on the day I was born. Yes. Sun sign is where the sun was on the day I was born. Yes. So, rising, what the clarification? So, 
when you create a birth chart, what the, the bits of information you need are the day, date you were born, physical location, and time. Those are the three pieces. For a lot of folks, the time piece is hard to get sure. unless they have access to their birth certificate. And I always recommend people refer to a birth certificate just because family history, parents history, mom's history, memory yeah. cannot always be accurate over all this time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that last bit, the time determines your rising sign. So basically, we take this information, we basically get a snapshot of the sky the minute you came into Earth, right? So it's like, oh, sun is in Aquarius, your moon is in Capricorn. You have a moon in Capricorn. So we can look at all the planets actually. So where was Jupiter when Malcolm was born? Where was Venus, Mercury, Pluto, Saturn? There's a lot of other planets that we can educate ourselves about and learn about. And each planet has different energies and affects different areas of our lives. Sure. So Venus usually rules love, romance, relationships, beauty, creativity, the arts, everything we value and love. And I see, I see my in Aries. Your Venus? Yeah. Yeah, Venus is in Aries, yes. Ooh, so, ooh, okay, okay. We okay. get a snapshot of the whole sky sure. and it gives us a more complete picture mm. of other things going on. Yeah. Okay. So, for beginners and for you, what I always recommend is since you know your sun sign already, mm. the next two I recommend people learn is their moon sign and their rising sign. The rising sign is also called the ascendant sign, too. Okay. There's two words for it. So when you plug in your time for your birth chart, it determines what's, what sign the horizon is at. Okay. So if you're born like before sunrise or during the day or near sunset, it's that changes within a day mm -hmm. of where the horizon is um, in the sky. So um, that's why time matters. It de helps determine your rising sign. Noted, okay. So those three. Sun, moon, rising, right? So I feel like, and another caveat, many different forms of astrology, many different systems from all over the world and very many different kinds of astrologers, mm -hmm. right? So there's astrologers, you know, it, it, there's very well-established like associations that you could be a part of that help astrologers with like being ethical ethics and all that and you get like a certi certification and all these kind of things and then there's some who are just very self-taught yeah. yeah you know and so I just want to kind of just point out there's a lot of ways people come at this and yeah. come from so who is interpreting your chart how you interpret your chart matters yeah. right um so my opinion is sun moon rising gives us a good foundation to start understanding. Like, I think those are the three pillars of your foundation and the other ones will help inform you. So we'll start there. No. Okay. All right. So let's start with your sun, just so we get clear about what Aquarius is and what it means for you. Yeah. And I actually have some interesting information. Ooh, Aquarius uh, is not a water sign. Oh, it's okay. No. Aquarius is air. It's air. Okay. All right. It's air, right? Okay. So Aquarius, the symbol for Aquarius are those three little, uh, sorry, two squiggles mm -hmm. that look like water waves, right? Yes. yes. So if you look on your chart next to Aquarius, there's little squiggles. Oh, yeah. It looks like waves. Yeah. It's actually not water waves. They're lightning bolts. Oh. Lightning bolts because Aquarius is air, no. things that deal with the sky. So air signs are intellect, knowledge, very airy, you know, heady um, folks. Re and- <laughs> Very <laughs> oh, And boy. so Malcolm, I would like to ask you what, you, and you gave this, um, you explained it a little bit already with like your love of water. Yeah. And so I don't think necessarily it's your Aquarius sign because that's an air sign, sure. but your rising sign, your ascendant is Scorpio. 
definitely a water sign. God. So I think everything you described about your love of water, your relationship of water, your use of water to like co- direct connect to God, yes. that's Scorpio, I think, playing out for Come you. Come on. And we will get to that in a second. Oh my. God. Back to Sun and Aquarius. Like, I would like to hear from you and maybe also like what you got informed from your aunt. Yeah. You know, I think that it just is a, is a nice um, familial kind of generational yeah. storytelling that's going on here. Of course, a whole lot more on the brink when we come back. But this is my ad break, y'all. It is the two year anniversary, the two year old birthday of on the brink and to celebrate we're giving out our on the brink sweaters y'all they're world famous each person that rocks one they keep saying they get comfier and comfier and comfier yo even with every single wash right now otbrink.myshopify.com on the brink sweaters are buy one get one 50 percent off to celebrate the two years so celebrate with your partner celebrate with your friends celebrate with your family y'all head over to otbrink.myshopify.com to celebrate with us all right let's get back to the show how do you feel like an aquarius like how does it play out for you um you know there okay so th- this is the funniest funniest context right and a friend of mine said it to me she's also an aquarius and it was the way the signs react to uh disagreement and it, 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 you know, you swipe through it each sign, and it gets the Aquarius. And she says, "Is this not? Is this not you?" And it was, uh, I see that we disagree, and uh, it sucks that you feel <laughs> that I offended you. <laughs> that was that was Aquarius energy. And I was like, "That is kind of me." I, I, I guess I, um, I Aquarian energy for me, at least my understanding or context of how I apply it to my life, is like it's just very individualistic it's very uh ideology it's very as it's very in my head i am the king and i'm the ruler of my own little universe and you can totally come into mine and if you don't like it that's fine that is it, you don't have to stay here if you'd like to i'll make you some hot chocolate if you don't want to go off and there is the door yeah, there's the door and if you don't like hot chocolate cool like you can go Hopefully your universe is as nice as mine, but I'm an Aquarius and I know my universe is like the best. That is my, my idea, maybe, of Aquarian energy. It is, we do things my, our own way. It's how we like it. I'm not pushy enough to say that my way is right. My way works for me. And if you don't like it, off you go. <laughs> right, right. Very interesting. So yes, you know, a lot of that does sound um what's typically understood as aquarians and how they work so surprisingly stubborn in a way like taurus the bull is known as like the stubborn sign usually but aquarius and i have to say i'm gonna say this um my son is in pisces my moon is in aquarius Come on. So we're kind of like Aquarius siblings, yeah. but a little bit different, right? Like yours is sun, mine is moon, but we have a crossover. Sure. So I have an investment in Aquarius when I talk about this. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. We can be stubborn mm-hmm. because we're so idealistic. Yes. Like we get so idealistic that we get fixed in that a little yes. bit. Yes. Aquarius Painful. is a Painful. fixed Painful. sign. Yeah. Yes. So that that's common. Mm-hmm. So other other things you mentioned are in individualistic mm-hmm. right like we like our freedom yeah we like our personal space we like our king and queendoms just the way they are you know i'm in control here yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yep. All me. Space. yeah and um and and a couple other traits of Aquarius is where the healers, a lot of healers are Aquarian. Yeah. Aquarians can be very community minded. They're the humanitarians. Like we think about the community. We think about others. We play that role. We like to be involved in groups mm-hmm. and organizations and working with others and part of that process. Yeah. Um, we are, there's a revolutionary streak. Mm-hmm. in us we want to change things transform things make them better yes we're the visionaries we can see very far mm-hmm. we have that gift to see very far and how it could be and we could get there 
if everyone just listened to me and did what I told them to do. <laughs> right? No, no, wait, okay. Um, okay. <laughs> Reading is over. It's too real. But 100% correct. 100% correct. And so, like, part of that revolutionary spirit is also being different. Yeah. Not choosing a traditional path. Mm -hmm. Going off the, um, not following the beaten track. Yeah. Like going yeah. off trailblazers. Yes. You know, yes. like, we, we're usually the first to try something. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and, and it is about being weird. Mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of Aquarian, part of that journey is, like, learning to get in touch with your own true self, authentic self, being okay with it, and then sharing that with the world. Yes. And it's kind of like, let the freak fly show. Like, I, 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 tell, we're people, also, I tell people all the time, we're also, even for new guests, I say, I'm like, I'm a weirdo. And just, and you're gonna yes. deal with it. I'm a weirdo, it's what it is. I, yes. I don't, I'm now. a weirdo, yes. I love it. We love being so weird, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I, I I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm like, I'm a weirdo. And, and like, like, we you know, like we value that. Yes. We yes. value like people who do things differently, think people who don't follow the norm. Like we we value that. Um, we want to be that. We usually do that. Yeah. So um also because we're such visionaries and it's air and it's intellect, um we are I, I, a lot of times the feeling is like, we're from the future, you know, like I can see the future. I've been there. I lived it. I've come back to let you guys know this future exists and I'll show you the way. I'll show you, I promise. You know? <laughs> Follow me. Um, and so we're leaders in that way, yeah. you know, a lot of Aquarian leaders. And um, back to the symbol of like, everyone thinks it's water because um, Aquarians are the water bearer, right? Yes. The image is like yes. someone, a female form, pouring water out of a, a container. Yeah. So that's more being the knowledge barrier. Mm -hmm. We are here to share knowledge. We're here to share wisdom yeah. from outside the norm places, outside normal thinking, mm -hmm. out, you know, just beyond. Yeah. Um, so a lot of us play that role for ourselves, for our communities, for our friends, you know, just sharing wacky ideas. <laughs> well, hey, what if that? Well, we're volunteering information that really wasn't needed, but it's like, hey, I know this. And so I feel like this might add value. I hope it adds value. Or the Aquarian is also like, I know it's going to add value. At least it has value for me to share it. Exactly. Maybe you don't care about information, but it has value for me to share it because I know knowledge. I know something. <laughs> right. Right. Um, and and like in a spiritual sense, it's a lot of Aquarians like kind of have that more cosmic attached to the future, coming from the future vibe. Mm -hmm. Um, they're here to a lot of their their purpose, their work, their destiny, however that shows up in what they do mm -hmm. is to help raise humanity or raise the vibration sure. of the world. Sure. You know, not everyone is here to play that role. Mm -hmm. but certain souls are like, come on, everybody. <laughs> like, yep. I'm trying, you know, like, yep. like, bring it up. <laughs> and the only way we do that is we maintain our own high vib vibration yeah. until everyone else catches up. Sure. So that's a specific role, right? And the specific, like, feelings we get for that. And I think so sometimes we get impatient. Yeah. You know, like, oh, oh, God, all this dead weight, you know? And, you know, that quote of, like, do you want to travel fast or do you want to travel far? If you want to travel fast, go alone. If you want to travel far, travel with others. Yeah. Right. And, and I understand that quote. It's very valuable for me. But a lot of the times it's like, I want to go fast. I want to go. Like, get rid of all this dead weight. You know, you're weighing me down. <laughs> oh, goodness. That is me. That is me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Aquarius. So now let's start mixing in some other information because I think exploring this other signs and planets will help also inform your Aquarius part. Sure. So rising sign. So it's where the horizon is in your birth chart. The moment you were born, it was in Scorpio. You are no. Scorpio rising, rising sign Scorpio. So what rising sign means for us is usually like the first impressions we make to others, how we present to the world, the mask we wear to others, 
how we are in relation to like new situations and new people. How do we show up in new situations towards new people, right? And so Scorpio, water sign, and I'll get to it in a sec, but that's when you kind of get the thing where like maybe you, you show up and people read you who don't know you that well as Scorpio, but then are surprised to find out you're an Aquarius. Right, yeah. you're Aquarius. Yeah. You know, there's people yes. like that. Yes. You don't seem like one at yes. all. Yes, yes. You know, like there's some people. You're like you're a Leo. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You know? Sure. And it's maybe because we've only really interacted with their rising sign and what they want to show us. It's first impression. Mm. You know. Mm-hmm. Um. So, Scorpio. Um. Water sign. So I think that's where your love of water comes, right? I know it comes from the whole time I'm over here. I'm like I'm a water. Ba- I, I, I would say water baby, and I'm thinking it's because like I'm you a, are a water baby. But, but I know are. water baby, but I thought it was the Aquarian. I was like, yeah, because like water bear, I'm a water. But no, it, it's the sport. So now, now I can clarify. I, 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 yeah. I, I have more detail. So now you have water and air in your chart, which is great. Tomorrow, you want to be balanced, you know? Yeah. <laughs> The Scorpios, they are the sexy beasts of the zodiac. You know, sexy, sensual, intense, mysterious. I'm attracted, but I'm scared. Like they're intimidating. Yes. yes. You know, like they're very intense. Yeah. If you've ever been close to a Scorpio, dated a Scorpio, Scorpio parents, siblings, whatever, my, you my, know. My, my, my sister is a Scorpio through and through and through. Yeah. And, and it now makes sense why her and I are like, we do not repel. We are, we, 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 we are this. And it, I think it, now I realize, and that's also how I show up because like some people will sometimes, and especially, yeah, I mean, me being like in the industry, me being more like, you know, on camera, talent, industry, is for people that do not know me. And when I first show up, I have been there where it was, you know, I rub my rub, my rub people the wrong way. And it's like, oh, he's a little mm-hmm. cocky. He's a little like, he's a little too sure of himself. He's a little too this. And, it's, and, and I guess, you know, with a pun first meeting, you aren't going to have a chance to like get deep inside my soul or get the vulnerable Aquarian <laughs> part of me. Yeah, it's going to be yeah. showing up like, yes, I'm hot. Yes, I, I you know, I, I came up with these clothes on. I came out, you know, uh, what's the uh, peacocking almost, right? Because I, I do yeah. care how I look. I, I like, I feel good when I look good and, and, and I'm aware of that perception and I always want to be ahead of that perception in order to, you know, maybe put myself in a better place if I meet somebody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. So it, to see how this is just helpful to be aware of, right? Like I'm going into a new situation. I know I come off of this. That's kind of my Scorpio playing out. Yeah. So either you yeah, play it out or you adjust it to whatever needs in that moment you may need, right? Um, also, Scorpios are very good at reading people, reading situations, mm-hmm. calling BS. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel that's true for you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like you just read between the lines, pick up on cues. This person's uh-huh. trustworthy. That one is not. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, you know, I'm not. What, I'm not doing with him. Yeah. You know, all this oh, kind yeah. of stuff. Oh yeah, the discernment you is know? real. I, I, I see. I see exactly who I need to see. Right when I need to see him, and then, I, and then I'm also, I think with, with people closest to me, and, or people that I think it maybe shocks people that like that, that are newer in my life is when like I'm very. I like to text and I say, "How are you?" And I, and I bold the the you. You know, and it, and it could be, oh, I'm good. And I, I can tell over text when someone's BS and I can tell in person if someone's BS and, 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 and I care. And I always want to say like, you know, I'll, I'll look at anybody, especially people close to me and no one can really ever say like, I'm doing fine and try to walk away. I'm like, I just like, I, I always say, give me your forehead and I'll touch your forehead. I'm like, okay, no, but how, how are you? I said, I, I said, I feel the energy's off. And that's all I say. It's like, I feel the energy is just a little different. Do you want to talk? Can I hold space right now? You know, and I'm not saying I force I force the vulnerability. I'm not saying I, I, I want to force it, right? People are going to volunteer to share when they want to. I'm not pushy by any means. But it, to me, it, 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 it has always been very uh, telling. And I think it's just empathic energy of mine, but I can just feel. I, and, I, and I adopt kind of the feelings of others in my environment around me. If the environment's yeah. off, I, I feel that I'm off. And I'm like, okay, I, I got to rectify. I got to rectify. And I think then it goes back to the Aquarian energy of like wanting to fix, wanting to heal, wanting to like something is not wrong in this environment, in this space, you know? And so what can I do? How can I adjust to, to fix and heal? Yes. Beautiful. So I think, yes, like the water, the Scorpio, that's part of like 
your intuition, your discernment, that your psychic ability, yeah. right? To read and feel situations and people. Yeah. The Aquarian is the intellect, the wisdom, the ideas, the lightning strike, right? The brilliance. So it's like, you know, slight discernment, but we're kind of parsing out a little bit how these things mm -hmm. function for you or just try to provide a framework for you to understand it. So it just gets a little bit more organized if that's, you know, helpful. Yeah. Um, a little bit more about Scorpios and let me know if this resonates or not. So intense. Mm -hmm. You know, see through BS, usually very like just cunning strategy, one step ahead. It's yeah. hard to outsmart a Scorpio. <laughs> sure. You know, sure. they've got their bases covered. Yeah. Um, generally in relationships, like they're again very intense, full commitment, mm -hmm. you know, in it to win it, yeah. not you know, messing around with temporary situations or unshaky situations. Yeah. You know, it's, they're very committed. Yeah. loyal yeah you know um yeah, that is all me well, yeah definitely um music is a good language for you um i know you're a dj yeah. so there's that um, like, just like passion oh yeah passion being passionate just being passionate you yeah. know like i said scorpios are the sexy beasts of the zodiac I, you know is it beast, um, is scorpio but they can be intimidating for some folks who aren't ready for it yeah all right <laughs> i know it is very intense i like i said i know i'm for some people and i'm not for some other people and i know it and i, and I think at those times it might be he's just a little too much and it's like great that's fine i'm gonna be in my little universe over here then I, like, yeah. I'm, I, I will say I am unchanging. I'm loyal, but I am unchanging. I'm not, I, I'm not going to do too much like conform to, to your comfortabilities for, for me to, to be able to exist in the ecosystem. Right. Beautiful. Beautiful. <clears throat> Last bit about Scorpio, because I think it's very telling, is it's the scorpion, right? That's the symbol for Scorpio. Yeah. And the story with scorpion is, like I said, they're very protective, very loyal, right? They you know, don't even try to stab the scorpion. Like I'm going to zap you with my tail, yeah. right? Like I saw it coming two steps ahead of you. Yeah, That's scorpion energy. But also scorpion energy is sometimes they're so busy attacking people, they just end up stabbing themselves <laughs> and poisoning themselves. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Scorpios will do that. Scorpions will do that yeah. as a yeah. insect. Yeah. Right? So just something to look out for, you know, <laughs> with that. Like you don't want to just, in your efforts to like, you know, strike out at someone else, you're accidentally actually striking out against yourself. Yeah. You're sacrificing yeah. something yeah. for yourself. Yeah. Most okay. Time. So Sun and Aquarius, Scorpio rising. The third one in this tripod we're gonna look at is your moon. Your moon is in Capricorn. That's that's January babies, right? Yes. So right before Aquarius is Capricorn, so my, my late Capricorn. December to late January, yeah. Capricorn is a earth sign. Yeah. So you have a pretty good balance of air, water, and earth so far. And earths are very steady and stable and foundational and down to earth, right? So it's a good balance for that air and water to yeah. flow. Yeah, definitely. The moon as a placement in your birth chart rules our emotional body. Water's, water is emotions, right? Sure. The moon's gravitational pull affects the waters and tides of earth and within us. Yeah. So it's a way we understand, we process, we deal with emotions. Yeah. And a good way I think about moon signs is kind of like our private innermost self. Not everyone gets to see that. Sure. It's like you at home at night in your pajamas on the couch. Yes. Like not everyone gets to see you. Like not that. at all. Not at all. Who gets to see <laughs> you like that, right? Yeah. Like the people most you live with yeah. or that you're most intimate with, family members, mm -hmm. partners, that kind of thing. Yeah. So it's kind of like that world and that part of ourselves, our yeah. private world. Okay. So very interesting. So Capricorn and Capricorn is an earth sign. The um, symbol for Capricorn is a goat. Right. Mm -hmm. And you always see those images of goats climbing up the mountain and there's like not even anything for them to stand on, but somehow they keep getting higher 
and make it to the top, yeah. you know, like, yes. that's Capricorn. Love like uh, hard working, I'm gonna every step, step yeah. by step, make it to the top of yeah. the mighty mountain. Yeah. So they're very successful. They're yeah. the CEOs, they're the business people, entrepreneurs. Sure. Um, very goal oriented, getting things done in this 3D world on this 3D plane. Yeah. We like tangible material things sure. we can touch, not ideas in the sky of what the future could be, yeah. you know, like they're here. Yeah. So that gets applied to your emotional world and how you understand and organize your emotions. Sure. So does that kind of resonate it, at it, that point it yet. definitely does it, it, okay. it, it definitely does because i don't are you cool calm collected even if there's roaring rappers underneath definitely well it it, it, it depends like I, I i guess what it will moon uh, like to myself maybe not always but to to the world oh man like in the midst of adversity i am like all right guys one foot in front of the other i know i'm the let's bring it let's bring it right here what makes everyone comfortable? What let's bring it all right down here and let's get it done. Sometimes and I and I think, yeah, definitely behind the scenes, you'd say, right, when no one's watching, I would like to think that I'm very methodical and procedural with how I want to compartmentalize and move through <laughs> move through life, definitely. Yes. So it's just an interesting way to deal with your emotional life. Mm -hmm. Right. Like it's just it's it's we just all function differently. Yeah. So generally it's um, not liking things too messy, <laughs> you know, like let's just figure it you out. Know, just that kind of thing. Yeah. Sometimes feelings and emotions are messy. So you'll just have that kind of push yeah. and pull. And like I said, Definitely. the cool, calm demeanor doesn't mean things aren't roaring underneath. Yeah. But that's just how you present. Like yeah. some people, some signs might, it doesn't matter. They'll just burst into tears. Mm -hmm. But other folks, no matter if the same feelings are going underneath, like the way you react and mm -hmm. process and hold those emotions is the Capricorn style. No. Nope. Um, it, it, it explains a lot. And I feel like I, like my, my mom is a Capricorn son. Uh, and mm -hmm. that, that's what I was clear about the timetable because like and I think I, I adopt some of that that earth energy from her and so I, I, I'm I only maybe now in this moment with you kind of seeing where I definitely draw a lot of her work ethic and I draw some, some of her energy and I'm like oh that's 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 her Capricorn and I think that's how it shows up in me more behind the scenes people definitely see like the Aquarian you, you know, uh, like you know my son a lot more some of the like like definitely the the moon upon or, or the rising upon first meeting me but the but the capricorn is definitely like foundationally i'm very much like house has to be here house has to be in order i don't feel i don't i'm gonna feel right in my house if my house is not clean if it's not in order what is step one step you know i'm you know everything even on, on the screen with my chart it's still bullet pointed for me i i you know even questions it it, it definitely resonates is all i'm saying yes yeah yes so so yeah, so you have some Capricorn. And what's interesting with Capricorn is like Capricorns are steady. They're reliable. Mm -hmm. They like order. They typically like authority and tradition. Mm -hmm. So that may mm -hmm. bump up against or just live, coexist with your Aquarian energy mm -hmm. of wanting to tear it all down and build something new. Yeah, yeah. Right. Definitely. And so, you know, I, I don't know how that might show up in your life, but maybe it how you described, like, I go to church, like Christian, you know, like going to church is an important part of my life, yeah. personally, family, culturally. And also, I love to incorporate these new, these other yeah. um, spiritual aspects. So it might show up like something like that. Yeah. Or that's one way to kind of that's exactly um, how interpret that energy showing up for you. And, like, that's exactly like, how it shows up. And I, and I think it also is indicative of even what I'm manifesting and what I'm alchemizing as my future, where I've always seen my future as a perfect blend of tradition and newness all at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's like foundation doesn't just make me comfortable, but it makes like community comfortable and, and it gives uh, context to maybe what has worked. So bringing some foundation of like, here's what does work and here's how we can all be on the same plane, at least in this, you know, I, cause I think grandiose visionary, very like, what is the empire? There's like, there, there is going to be a mountain that I own one day. There's going to be actual land that I own one day that will it, it encapsulate, you know, my community, my family, my friends. 
And I think it's going to be both a mixture of what has worked, what is tradition. And I like tradition of the old. I, I have such respect for like, for what was. Um, and I'm not saying it as far as adversity, but what was and what has brought us here culturally and what has brought us to the beautiful place that we are at. But then I also recognize that history has not always maybe worked, right? So there has to be space for newness. There has to be fertile ground for newness to be born on top of tradition. And so I, I like to think that maybe they do, that this Capricorn and Aquarian energy, they, they do kind of coexist a little bit where right when I get too heady and get too like, let's try this, you know, the, the, the Capricorn kind of comes in, all right, well, here's what's worked a little bit. And so I think both of them together bring me to right about here, I hope. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. That's beautiful to have that balance. Yeah. You know? Definitely. Um, and a couple, a couple more thoughts. I want to see if they resonate with you. Do you have your moments where you're moody, though? Oh, totally. Good. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, despite the cool call collected externally to certain folks, um, Moon and Capricorn still has their tendency to just go through moods. Oh, yeah. And be moody. <laughs> oh, no. Like, and sometimes. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes they can be hard on themselves. I'm just yeah. gonna whisper it so no one hears me all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you know, definitely, like, definitely. you know, like we're multi-dimensional beings. But what I, what I find helpful when you hear these things, it's just like, oh, that's why I'm like that, yeah. right? Instead sure. of thinking it's like this like fatal human flaw, mm -hmm. it's just we're all designed very differently and function very differently. We're all human, yeah. and so I know I have that tendency to be very hard on myself. Yeah. You know, that's not something I need to be hard on myself for <laughs> additionally. Yeah. You know, I yeah. it's just I'm just like that. I'm gonna keep an eye on it. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to manage it, but oh. that tends to happen for me. Am I being too hard on myself right now? Yeah. You know, like take your moments of checking yourself and checking in. Yeah. I love that. Always. I love that. Yeah. Oh, that that one hundred percent is me. I think self kindness is something that I institute into the spiritual religious practice of my own life and just the day to days of constantly checking in with my with myself and saying like okay the thought patterns that I'm happening that like like that are happening right now that I'm having are they rooted in self-kindness are they rooted in a little bit more self-sabotage thinking that self-sabotage or kicking myself in the ass is what I need to go and I'm, I'm like it you know kind of you know what has worked and what hasn't worked Kick, kicking myself saying like you're not doing hard enough it's not working for me, it doesn't. And maybe it might work for other people. I, I, I don't know. But I know for me, it's like I have to institute a healthy, healthy, healthy amount of self-kindness into my thought, mm -hmm. into my life. And compassion, yeah. right? Compassion. Oh, yeah. Compassion starts within. Yeah. The more compassionate we can be with ourselves yeah. from that place of com compassion is how we're comp compassionate to others. Yes. It's in direct relation. Yeah. The amount of compassion I allow for myself is the amount I can allow for others. Of course. So if I want to be more compassionate to others and the world and everything around me, it starts with me giving more com com self-compassion to myself. So for you, Malcolm, then we have your son in Aquarius, Scorpio rising, moon in Capricorn, right? So does that give you a fuller picture and understanding of astrology, your own personal astrology? It, it totally does. And, I, and I, I imagine that, you know, people listening or even looking at their charts or they might have a knowledge of their chart to even have more context. I completely understand. I have not had it broken down like that for myself. And so I have a full Okay. Yeah, definitely. Good. So and see where tenants then, then, come from, too. Okay. Yeah. Good. So then the next baby step I tell folks is now when you check your horoscopes, read all three signs. Yes. Read Aquarius, read Scorpio, read Capricorn. Mm -hmm. So you'll get a fuller photo of or picture yeah. and understanding of what's going on for you in that moment. Definitely. So that's just kind of like baby step in astrology to just keep learning more. Because, you know, a lot of times we'll read our horoscope, like you'll read Aquarius and you're like, some of it's me, but some of it's totally not me. Yeah. Right. And you just want to pick and choose that mm -hmm. because the other parts might get filled in when you read the Scorpio horoscope or the yeah. Capricorn horoscope. Mm -hmm. So that's just another way to learn more about yourself and astrology <laughs> and other signs in general. Yeah. Right? No, I, I, it's, it's just crazy because now it's like. <laughs> 
I'm running through people's signs in, in my head now, and I, and, I, and I, you know, at least like my siblings, maybe my parents, you know, all of those are people that I have, you know, knowledge of, of maybe their their full their full picture, and I'm like. Oh, I'm, I'm having a, a few, what Oprah calls them, the aha moments. I'm having a few glass-shattering moments right now of saying, oh, that explains so much about Dad. <laughs> that explains so much about Bob. <laughs> Just a helpful framework for us <laughs> to make sense yeah. of the things and situations and relationships going around us. Definitely. That going on around us, right? Definitely. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank, like, thank you for, for your patience and breaking that down for me. Like I said, Total novice to it. Nothing but a few minutes ago, what I knew I was, uh, what I knew was that I was an Aquarius. Now I have a clear understanding that I'm an Aquarian sun, a Scorpio rising, and a Capricorn moon. Yes, correct. That is so cool. And you're welcome, Malcolm. Happy birthday, hey. Aquarian brother. And it's my honor. It's my honor when people share and op- yes. they shared their journeys with me. It's yes. an incredible honor for me that you let me go into your birth chart and ask you these intimate questions yeah. about yourself. Yeah. You know? No, very like it, it, it's great, and, and I would I wouldn't want to be vulnerable with anyone else but my listeners and, and with you. So thank you for facilitating that. That is. No, oh, you are welcome. My pleasure. Well, you know, on you know, in the vein of, of you know a deeper understanding of our personal selves and uh, more than anything, I think just our tendencies and how that can feed into our purpose. Do you have any tips for more people to become a little more spiritually in tune or more maybe find a little more spiritual wholeness in their life? Yes, yes, I do have some tips. I brainstormed some tips for you and your listeners. Thank you. On Meg of the Valley's hot tips for spiritual wellness and growth. Ooh, let's go. So that's really kind of like as a spiritual advisor, like that's just what I love. It's what I'm passionate about. Yeah. It's, it, I just do it. I love to encourage other people to do it. I love hearing stories, sharing stories. Yeah. And so anyone who's interested in just being well and growth and transformation and, and expansion, um, these are good tips because they might just come in handy. So. What's very powerful for me is mantras. They work. Words matter. What we say matter. Words are spells. How we talk to ourselves, how we talk to the world matters. We are so powerful, we create our own reality. So you want to be very careful of what you're saying, right? So you want to speak in the affirmative, speak in the present tense. And we, we, we know we have these habits where we say like, oh, but that's never gonna happen, or I'm never gonna do that, or I'm not that lucky, or like, no way. You know, like we have those stories, tapes, limiting beliefs. And so if there's something like that you want to rewire, just something you wanna manifest, or they're just healing for me, you come up with a mantra. The best is to keep it simple and keep it true for you. What I do is, Check in to see what mantra I'm needing in the moment because that might shift and change over time. And I say it to myself before I wake up, before I get out of bed in the morning, hopefully before I even open my eyes, before I open my eyes and check my phone, right? Like, give me a moment before I even open my eyes, I'll say my mantra. So I'm starting my day, I'm reminding myself this is the energy I'm putting out first thing in the morning, right? And then repeat as necessary throughout the day. I even write it on post-it. Yeah. Right? And uh, I love the mantra. I, I have a few that I keep in my journal. I keep in my, my, I have a whiteboard in my yeah. room. And it's one of the, you know, it's mantras that you see the first thing when you wake up. I put them kind of across from, you know, when I, mm-hmm. when I sit up, what do I see? And it's like, you got, it's one thing to see it. It's one thing to read it. As you said, it's a very different thing to say it. Yeah. So say it to yourself in the mirror, right? Yeah. Like yeah. say it out loud yeah. to yourself in the it, mirror. It, like you're it, it mean. So like you're mean. Look, and it can sound so corny. I know some people might be hearing it just like, oh, I got it. And I'm like, I'm so serious. Like there was a point at which I just felt so inexcellent last year. And literally during the pandemic, I literally started looking at myself every single day and saying, You are excellent. I am excellent. And I point at myself and I say, I am excellent. And I hold my heart. And I say, I am excellent. And, 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 and it's just to hold the heart and to say it. Oh, uh, you know, and, 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 I love it. Uh, like, I'm serious because, like, and, 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 you know, hand over my heart is just where I can, that's where I can also nurture a little more compassion for myself, right? So to say that, to say, 
I am excellent, I am worthy, I am deserving. And hold the heart, say it. Yes, the mantras help. Yes, and they work. Yeah. And I'll share some of the personal ones I use for myself. Yeah. And even during the pandemic. Yeah. Um, during the pandemic, my it was, I am enough. This day is enough. Uh, this moment is enough. Yes. Because all of a sudden we're stuck at home being unproductive. Why, what am I, you know, like I just, our sense of worth, our sense of being measured by productivity and making money and being out in the world and move, you know, like I just had to be okay with, I did nothing today, but sleep or be bummed out or be depressed or just trying to wrap my head around what a pandemic is. Right. (laughs) And so that was my mantra. Like I'm enough. This day is enough. This moment is enough to just ground me, keep me present and not spinning out like that. I love that. Another popular one for me is be gentle. Mm. Be gentle. I too am very hard on ourselves. I just think everyone is. We're just yeah. conditioned to be very critical of ourselves, you know, oh, yeah. and judge ourselves. Yeah. And so be gentle, gentleness, the powerful, the power in gentleness, yeah. right? Just being gentle. Yeah. And um, oh, another one that I've used recently um, is I am loved, mm-hmm. I am lovable, I am loving. Yes, yes, yes. For those self-worth, I'm unlovable feelings yes. Yes. <laughs> we, yes. we may have, right? Just yeah. remind yourself, because it is true. It's just true. Yeah. I am loved, you, you are I am loved. lovable. I am loving, you know, and, and, and just reminding like, that, yourself of that truth. All day. And it's like you said, right, to to be, to feel, you know, to, to love others, you have to love yourself, right? And, and so yeah. to, to create, I just love how you break love down in three different ways, right? To know that you are lovable and that you are loving of others and you have to believe that and that you are worthy of love. Like, oh, just beautiful, beautiful watches. They're beautiful, right? So yeah. keep them simple. Yeah. You might have a rotation because some days you're needing the like yeah. I am enough one. Yeah, yeah, some yeah. Days you need the I loved one. You know? I'll tell you, uh, I, I have a friend. She she has a, a she, she she has different mantras that she'll pray for herself, and she dumps them into a hat almost every single day, so she could have a different one she draws every morning. And just I love that. Yeah, I love that yeah. personal yeah. ritual. Yeah. you know, yeah. so things like that. So, yeah. like I said. Keep it simple. Just say it to yourself before you get out of bed. Yeah. Repeat as necessary throughout the day. <laughs> Post-its might help. Those are yeah. my hot tips, okay? But you do you. Put them in a hat, swirl them around, pick one out. Whatever works, you know? I love that, yes. Um, but yes, yeah, saying it out loud, I think, is another level of sure. power. Power. Speaking truth to power. Okay. Yes. Second tip, it's called earthing. The practice called earthing, and it's just connecting with Mother Earth. The most powerful way is bare feet on Mother Earth. Mm. So bare feet on dirt, on grass, on sand, on rocks, in the ocean, even more magical, right? But just physically having contact with our Mother Earth. It's called earthing, very similar to grounding, right? We're connecting to Mother Earth because... She is such an immense life force that not only can we release all to her, just like let go of all the stress, the fear, she can take it, she could absorb it and transmute it and send it to where it needs to go next. That's her divine intelligence. Yes. On the flip side, we can draw up energy. The most powerful life force energy. We want to connect to that. We want to receive yeah. that. We want to be filled with that. And we want to work and create and manifest yes. using that energy. Totally. So connecting to earth. And so I know that might be challenging if you live in like an urban space where you don't have access or it's a quarantine or it's raining. Sure. But like hands on trees <laughs> yes. is like another powerful one. Just it, touching it, a tree you know. when you walk by. Petting plants, like your little plant, just pet it gently. Hi, plant. I love you, plant, right? Like, it's just connecting with earth element. Yes. So if you're stuck at home, you know, touch your plants. Yeah, yeah. Connect to earth to release and to recharge. It's a simple practice. Love that. You know? And along the line with this, um, this is my third tip. Uh, The practice of release and letting go. You know, it just as a daily spiritual hygiene pro- process. 
So water is great for that. If you can, hot bath with Epsom salt. Oh, love it. You know, it's like, just draw all that out, the magic of hot water. Obviously, you got a hot tub, even better. But I know not everyone has- That's what we're on. <laughs> Remember, we're manifesting hot tubs. I'm glad yeah. we're teaming up on this one because yeah, totally, totally. it's already here. It's already right done. If anybody wants to donate to the, to, to the On the Break and Vega of the Valley uh, hot tub fund, just we, we're collecting funds right now. Okay? Yeah. I'm serious. It's the first time we see each other in person, Malcolm, it's going to be in a hot tub. I'm calling it. it right now. I'm, I'm calling it right now there. just to release. <laughs> I can't wait. I can, look, same, same, I'm telling you. Oh. So some folks do not currently have access to regular hot tubs um, or baths are just not practical time, whatever. Yeah. Just even in the shower. Like what I love to do in the shower is like you just envision the water taking away all your troubles and stress and negativity and things you want to think about and it just going down the drain. Yep. Yep. So just very simple, intentional practices daily for just hygiene. And you just let go. And again, simple mantra, may I release all that is not mine. Uh, because we do absorb, we do yeah. take on. I mean, you know, with the news, with everything, with emotional stuff, you know, like we just take on, especially if we are sensitive, empathic people, you know, I'm a sponge. I could be a sponge, you know? And so you just want to just release it. So oh. just as daily practice. Oh, totally there. Yeah, I, I, I can't help but be empathic sometimes. It, it, and, it, and it's hard because like I have to yeah. remind myself sometimes and I, I've, I've even had um, just, just like, like certain spiritualists kind of, you know, maybe in getting, getting a massage or something, just say like, hey, just remember that the world's problems are not yours. <laughs> and sometimes like I have to be reminded of that. And, and, and a part of that, that releasing, letting go practice is a huge like, I is a huge uh, part of, you know, remem remembering what is me and what is not me and then giving myself permission. I think giving my myself permission uh, and granting that to myself, granting the allowance of like, it's okay to let it go. It's okay yes. to let it go. These are these are not your problems. Not to say that, that I don't care, but I find myself, like you said, we're, we're sponges where you want to hold so much space and you think like, I have all the space to hold it. And then, 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 then you're a little drained like five hours later and you're like, okay, wait, I got to, I got to go deep. I got to go inward. I got to do it for me, you know? Yeah. And that's a learning process, right? Yeah. Like of how our energy works, when we need to recharge, mm -hmm. you know, all that kind of stuff. And I would say even with your level of intuition is um, you sit with it long enough and you'll realize, oh, this isn't mine. Like this anger isn't mine. Actually, I think it's dad's. Yeah. Yeah. Or grandma's. Mm -hmm. And I've just absorbed it and been holding it, but it's not even my anger. So I'm just going to give that back. Yep. <laughs> Hand that back. Give that up. It ain't even mine, you know? Yeah. But like when we're young or, you know, surrounded by that, we might take it on. And it takes maturity yeah. and discernment to be able to be like, that ain't even my yeah. pain or cross to bear. Uh, so I'm going to put that down. 100%. Yeah. 100%. All right, ready for the fourth and final hot tip for spiritual <laughs> wellness and ready for the fourth and final block. It's actually your favorite one. It's oh. or better one. Oh. Or better, yes. But so favorite. I know, you know, just in general, not even spiritual, but a lot of business, entrepreneurial, self-growth circles and scenes, it's all about manifesting, right? Like creating, manifesting, mapping out, mindset stuff, you know, that kind of stuff is putting the vision out there that you want to create, creating the reality from the feeling of already being in that place, yeah. right? Like calling it to your present moment. Mm -hmm. And so I agree with all that. And what I like to add, especially now, but always is when we put a vision out there, um, this is the business I want. This is the career I want. This is the type of partner I want, family I want, lifestyle I want. Yeah. Um, yes, craft it to where it inspires you and you feel it and it's true for you. Mm -hmm. And then when you put it out there, you just want to tag on the caveat universe. I'm saying I'm worthy and deserving of this. This is in alignment with my soul. Yeah. This feels right for me. I'm going to manifest it. Please help me if it serves my highest good yeah. or better. Or better universe. I'll take all that. And if you've got better, I'm open to that too. 
when you said this at at Victoria and Brittany's event, that was the church moment for me. I heard the church organs just going in because I don't think when we're manifesting. And let me speak for accountability for myself. I just you know sometimes we we try to be so specific and say, well, I want I want a thousand dollars and this exact car and this and this and this, and you get so stuck on this one idea of what you think you want that. Until you said, or better, I didn't realize that maybe if we get so specific what we want, we don't give ourselves space for God or the universe to give us even something better. And I, I love that. Yes, and it helps precisely for that reason, yeah. tacking on the or better gets us out of control and ego. Mm. Because that's where you're controlling from when you're like giving universe you know, the plan you want it to play out in the timeline. Yeah. You know, it's not that way, right? Like there's a certain amount of faith, surrender and trust that you're co-creating. We're co-creators. Yes, we're going to show up and do our part. Yeah. But let's leave room for universe to do its part Mm -hmm. and deliver something to you that you just don't even know about yet. Never dreamt could exist because from where you and I sit in our little pea-sized ego brain and consciousness, we can't fathom the limitlessness of the universe or God or all-knowing God or Jesus, whatever you want to call it, right? Creator. I like creator. Um, And so we want to allow that the universe might have a more grander perspective in which to deliver something that's for our highest good, that is beyond our wildest dreams. We want to leave room for that. Yeah. And so that's why I like that practice. It just brings in that level of surrender, faith, and openness yeah. to really receive. 100%. So whatever you want, we want a lush, hot tub and surrounded by beautiful nature or better universe or better. You got better, we'll take better. Or if better. it's feeling natural hot springs, okay. Okay, I'll meet Malcolm there. Yes, yes. Forget the tub, the whole spring. It it, it is fine. I own the land. You know, and I love to say the or or better because I think even, you know, if I heard that a few months back from you, it's wild because I think even in the things that I've been manifesting maybe for the previous few weeks, it's like I wrote down specifically, I said, I want this or better. And I think there's been opportunities that if I wasn't thinking about better, I would have been bummed maybe for a few days to say it didn't happen. But because I kept holding in the back of my mind or better, it opened up space. And of course, you know, there's, there's, there's no coincidence, you know, in, in, in the creator's eye, but it's, oh, wait, better was for me. It's so where I thought, oh, I didn't get this opportunity, another opportunity that I would not have been ready for had I gotten what I thought I wanted came by and it was better than what I could ever wanted. It, it helped in just instead of going into funk mode and not like problem funkadella funk mode which is a funk mode i like to be in <laughs> you know, uh, you know yeah. funk mode of like oh getting into and getting into a funk getting into a mood maybe some of that that scorpio energy coming you know coming coming to get me the capricorn energy coming to get me it was because i was just holding in the back of my mind crater has better for me yeah and that is trust that surrender that's Jesus take the wheel, universe take the wheel, creator take the wheel. I trust that you will deliver what is for my highest good. Well, y'all, that is our show for the day. Once again, happy birthday, yeah, to myself. Special thank you to Vega of the Valley. And thank you guys for rocking with On The Brink as we celebrate two years. That's what this podcast is all about. As per usual, make sure to follow our guest at Vega of the Valley. She's doing incredible work. So please make sure to connect with her so that way you can get some gems. You can get some healing done as well. And of course, follow on the brink everywhere at OT Brink to celebrate the two year right now. As I said during the show, during our break, we are giving our sweaters out right now. Buy one, you get one half off. You know, got to get a two for it to celebrate everything that is on the brink. Thank y'all so much. God bless. Follow us everywhere at OT.